practicing. How long did you continue? Mumeke Shapa? No, I don't believe you. But did he have a good time last night? I think you were shy because I was here. You weren't dancing. Only the top floor was representing. Huh? <laughs> so, and I hope you will continue to represent today, but that doesn't mean that we are not paying attention to our speakers. And it's our last day, so we really want to make sure that we set off this last day well. So let us continue in the good spirit that we've had for the last week and make sure we get the benefit of everything that um, will be available for us today. So we thought we'd start off this morning before we get to the serious business later in the day with something more about careers and possibly this time uh, I think yesterday we were talking about careers in or most of you seem to be have a lot more is, interesting careers in medicine in law engineering and so on but there are many other careers that one can pursue and there were many questions about what if I am talented in design what if I am talented in singing what if I'm talented in the arts and so we thought we should address something about talent in the arts. And we have with us this morning uh, Dorothy Getuba, who is in the arts. Uh, and she will come and introduce the team that she's here with to talk to you a little bit about um, her area of the arts. You've been exposed to the music, and she's in a different sector, which she will let you know a little bit more about for the next session. So please give a warm welcome and pay attention to Doris Gituba. Good morning. How are you doing today? Did you, did, I, did you feed this young people breakfast? I, yeah, I had some breakfast, but the way you all are sounding, I don't know if you had breakfast, so let's try this again. Good morning. Outstanding. Thank you so much for having us again this week. We were here last week and we were with your, with your juniors and we had a really good time and, and we hope that today we can have as lovely a time. My name is Dorothy Getuba and I am the CEO and partner and co-founder of a company called Spielworks Media. Spiel, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Spielworks Media, I'll tell you a little bit about our company and then I'll introduce my team. Spielworks Media, we create TV shows. That's what we do. We make television shows. We make films. We make movies. That's what we do. We just have fun when we go to work. So I have actors and I have cameramen and I have directors. I have wardrobe designers. I have set designers. So we're inherently in a very creative environment. And I'm very fortunate to bring two of my team members with me. I normally work with very young people, young people like you, because I'm about a million years old. So I, I, I figure that if I hang around with young people, then you will all think I'm young as well and funky and cool. All right? So with me is Ndanu Kilonzo. Ndanu Kilonzo is the head of production head of production in, in, in television and film for stuff to be produced. We need to have producers, the actual showrunners, the people who run around and make sure that a script that has been written comes from a piece of paper and it ends up on the television screen. Sondanu heads all those people. She's in charge of them. Um, and Danu is, do we want to tell them how old you are? She said she's 12. That's what she said. She's not 12. She's very young, but she's shy about her age. And I have Michelle Slater. Michelle is head of marketing at Spielworks Media. So when we make all these TV shows, when we create all these programs, then Michelle is the one who goes out and she sells them. And I work alongside with her. She's also very young, and she said she's seven years old. We, we don't like to tell our ages. You know, girls, don't, girls don't, don't tell their age to the guys. We just, we just pretend we are very young. 
and pretty. Thank you so much for having us today. I'm going to share with you a little bit of a story about myself. One of the questions I always get is, how did you start making television shows? Now, I'm going to go back a little bit and, and take you back to my high school days. But before I, I go there, do we have any scholars from Alliance Girls High School? All right. So that's where it all started for me. I attended Alliance Girls High School. And you know, Alliance is all about the books and the reading and everybody's serious. But I always knew that I loved music, that I loved drama, that I loved theater. And so that's something that I did when I got to school. But when I finished from four, I wanted to go and study theater and I wanted to study the arts. But my parents are very serious people, you know. My mom was in finance. My dad is a biochemist. So doing TV, film, that was not an option. And so they sent me to law school. And I was in law school, and then I did a degree in communications as well. And I worked, and I worked in Canada, and I worked in Canada for a while, and I worked in venture capital. So for a while there, I was in the financial sector. But you see, I am a creative person. For those of you who write, or who dance, or who sing, or who paint, or who draw, you know that creative people are very passionate people. And they're, for me, I was very restless. And I knew that if I don't do that which I believe I was purposed to do, then I would not be happy. And so one day, I just left my job. I had a very, very good job. And I left it. And I decided to pursue a career in TV and film. The problem is I didn't know anything. The only thing I knew is that I love watching television. That is what, honestly, I was passionate about. I just loved to be lost in the TV shows. And so I had to learn every single thing about television. But the interesting thing is that every step that I took, whether I went to law school or whether I was in communications class or working in the financial sector, everything that I learned, every single step that I took helped me in creating my company. This is to tell you that education is very important. When we go to university, we learn how to learn. Because what happens is when you come to the big world, there's nobody there to teach you, nobody there to look over your head. So you must learn to learn and then keep on learning because learning is a continuous process. So that's what happened. And one day, I decided to leave my family in Canada and move back to Kenya because I realized there was a demand. There was a demand for local content. I'm sure sometimes or when you get a chance, you get to watch our, our local channels. And people, Kenyans, were asking for local TV shows. So as a businesswoman, I put my business hat and I said, this is an opportunity that I can tap into. And so I came to Kenya and I started a company. It was very, very difficult. That's the thing. Nothing good ever comes easy. It was very, very difficult. I remember when we were starting out, you go to a TV station, you have an idea on a piece of paper, and they say, how does it look on screen? How is the program going to play out? We need you to shoot a pilot. And so we had to go and we had to find the money, and you have to be creative in how you find this money. People always say, where can I get capital? I even had someone ask a question. I have a very good idea, because we were watching from inside. They have a good idea, but I need capital. And so we had to be creative. One thing that I always say is look around the people around you, the people who believe in you. My family and my friends believed in me, and they gave me 2,000 shillings here and 10,000 shillings there. And eventually, we had enough money to shoot a pilot, and we sold it. That was our first show. And after that, we have been producing lots and lots of shows. Right now, in our library, we have over 700 episodes of TV shows. And we are all over Africa. We are in South Africa, in, the, in Mauritius, in Namibia, in Zambia, in Kenya, in Uganda, in Tanzania. And this all happened four, started four years ago. So there are some lessons that I've learned. And I'll just share them with you.
one. Guys, you must learn how to dream. You must dream. What do you want? What do you desire? What is in your heart? What do you want to do? Who do you want to be? Where do you want to go? You must dream it. You must put it in your head. Creation happens two ways. It starts in your mind when you imagine something. When you put something in your mind, you see, if you can see it, if you say, I can see myself in university in Chicago, that means it can happen. If you say, I want to go to Harvard, it can happen. If you say, I want to be first in class, it can happen. So you put it in your mind, you dream it, you create it in your mind. And then you believe that you can do it. You must believe in yourself before anybody else can believe in you. It is utterly pointless for people to see you and say you're so talented, but you don't see that talent in yourself. For your teacher to say, I see so much potential in you, but you don't see that potential in yourself. So you must believe in yourself. You must dream, imagine it, and then believe that it can happen. That is what faith is about. Even the Bible says, God can give us immeasurably more than we can ask or even imagine. But anything can happen in our minds, from Einstein to Oprah Winfrey to James Mwangi. These people believed in their minds that they were going to do and be that which they are. So that's what you have to do. The second thing that you have to do when you have dreamt, when you have imagined that you want to go to Harvard or to University of Chicago, or you want to go to Oxford, or you want to be a producer, you want to be a doctor, you want to be a surgeon, you must then decide. You must decide that I am going to be that person. And when you decide, you set a goal and you say nothing is going to stand between you and that goal. That is what we decided. We said we were going to be the number one television production company in Africa and nothing will stand between us and that goal. So you stay focused. Everything else, I like to call it a side show. So you focus. You decide that you're going to get that. So you will do whatever it takes. So if you want to go to Harvard, you say to yourself, what do I need to do to get there? Who are the friends I need to keep? What do I need to say? How do I need to behave? Then go. And then go after that goal. Work hard and work smart. People always think, that the creative business is, is, is just the creative business, that it's easy. It is so difficult. So no, it's not only about being beautiful and having a good voice and being able to sing and being able to dance. You must work hard and you must work smart. And Danu had to go to school to learn what she's doing now. I didn't, but I had to teach myself. I had to spend a lot of time learning how to be a producer and making mistakes along the way. These mistakes are all lessons. So don't be too hard on yourself when you make a mistake. Creative, the creative industry, for anybody who's interested, whether you want to be an actor, a director, a musician, whether you want to be a news anchor, whether you want to be a photographer, a talk show host, a writer, a producer. It is so much work. It is so much work. I remember when I started out, I used to sleep at midnight and wake up at 3 a.m. 
because it is a lot of work. Right now I have people who go and they have to be on the set, the actors have to be there at 7 and they leave at 6. It is a lot of work. When you see people on TV acting, it is just not easy, it is work. So let nobody cheat you that this industry is easy, it is not, it takes a lot of hard work. As is everything in life, we must work hard and we must work smart. So before I take your questions, before we take your questions, I want to remind you the three things. You dream, you decide, you do. That's it. Dream, decide, and do. And whatever it is that you want to be, as long as you can imagine it and you can believe it, then you can be it. All right? Okay. So now, um, my team and I will take your questions if you have any. No? Okay. So we will now. I don't think that are they are. Okay, I can see some questions. All right. Hi, Hi. My, my name is Elizabeth Linda from my gas Nairobi, Kawangware branch. Can we keep quiet so we can hear Elizabeth's question? Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, my question is, should a, is a person supposed to have experience in acting or uh, filming before joining like drama in university? You know, experience is a good thing. You know, if, if you look at it, we are all actors. That's what I say. So we are all getting experience. Sometimes someone makes you so angry and you have to keep on smiling. You're just acting, you know. We all have experience. I know people always say that you need a lot of experience before you get a job or you need experience before you join drama. I didn't have any experience and I joined Rubber Club. What you have to do is you have to go and audition. Believe in yourself and say that my experience will start here. Sometimes when you have experience, it's an advantage, but it doesn't have to stop you if you don't have experience. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Question is, my question is, I can hear you, Suspita. Suspita's microphone's not working. Talent in, in drama and in video are always nurtured in high school. How do you connect your organization to schools to get the best? And my second question, do you, do you take part to further, in furthering education of talented dramatists who do well in high school and cannot further their education to the university? Okay, so I get you two questions. Your first one was, I know the second one is how do we further the, the talent of the people? My first question was, talent in drama and in video are always natured in high school. How do you connect your organization to school to get the best? Why are we laughing? Can we give him a hand? Can we clap for him? All right. Awesome. Danu, do you want to answer that? Oh, she didn't hear, so I'll answer it. So yes, um, talent is nurtured in, in high school. Mine, I was nurtured in high school. I did the dancing, the writing, the music, the singing in, in high school. Now, unfortunately for us in Kenya, we don't necessarily have schools that are dedicated entirely to film and television and drama. We have universities that can offer some degrees, I believe, in the creative arts and maybe in writing, but not necessarily in film, not necessarily in television, not necessarily only in theatre arts. You know, if you're in, in Canada, you're in America, there are schools that are dedicated to that. We don't have that here in Kenya. For, for me, my dream is to one day open a film and television school, and, and hopefully we can be able to get um, kids graduating from high school and really pursuing this as a profession. In terms of what do we do to nurture talent of the actors that we have, no, we don't send them to university for further studies, but what we do is we create opportunities for them 
in our companies. If you're an actor and you want to be a director, we will help in training you, we will take you to courses if there are any. Uh, we have our crew, sometimes they want to go and be better directors, art directors, and if there's a course, then we're able to assist them in taking those courses. So that's what we do for, for our people, and we do know and we hope that we'll do more in the future. Hi. I'm Mary Wanjiko from Moy Girls, Nairobi. And my question is, um, the industry, the art industry is a very wide sector. But then again, the focus tends to be on the actors, the musicians, the directors, and the producers, as we've said. But what happens to the, to do, to the poets? Because most of their works only end up in papers, and some are even thrown. Have you ever thought of establishing a program whereby there is competition for poets or something like that to to encourage poetry? Well, thank you for that question, and that's a very, very good idea. I cannot say that I thought about it, but I'm going to say thank you very much because you've given us a very, very good idea. We do have poets who write for us our scripts because, you know, writers are, are writers. And, uh, and, and what happens is that they end up writing scripts for us, but no, we've never had anything specially done for the poets, but we are going to work hard at doing it. There are very many events, however, that poets do have in Nairobi, slum festivals, you know, they come and they do poems and they have competition open mic nights and things like that. And that's information I believe you can get on Facebook, on, on the internet, but there are forums, there, there are poets who are, who are there and I can, can connect you to a few of them. Are you a poet yourself? All right. I'm glad to hear that. Awesome. Hi. 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 I am Matthew Nyamlori from Nairobi School. My question is, do you employ only ladies, gender balance in your company? I'm seeing only two ladies there. Now, my second question is, do you have employment opportunities? We have so many talented scholars here so that we might join you in the next few years. All right. Okay, do we have gender bar? Thank you very much. Can I tell you the guy who was supposed to be with us, he was running late. Huh? Isaac. We came with him last week. So there would have been some balance here if the guys kept time. I don't know. Maybe, you know. But we do. We do. We have to. The kind of work that we do calls for all of us. You will find that in some areas, there are more women. For instance, in production. Because production requires such uh, multitasking. You must do 20 things at the same time. And the guys are like, Ugh. you know. But we do have some guys who are production managers, who are producers. But if you go like into a set, you will find lots of guys because a lot of the work that we are doing is lighting and grips and pulling things and so guys are always there. So if you come to Spielworks Media, you will find that we have both genders. But I will make sure that, uh, that next time I bring them because you're all so smart. My God, I forgot your scholars and you would call me out on this. And I'll get Danu to come and answer about future prospects and, and things like that. Hi. Hi. I'm Miriam. Hi. Miriam. Just, okay, no, just a second. When you were here last week, we got many names from your colleagues who were interested. So if you have some names, we are able to take them. And when you're done with school and you're really, especially actors, if you're really interested, we had also talked about the Kenya National Theatre. So if you go there, you will find other people, you will find auditions, so you can join and be auditioned for the many shows. It's not only for Spielworks Media, but every other production comes there to get actors. But you do feel like the need and a bigger interest. We are here, we'll take some names, we'll add to the ones we have. We are trying to work out uh, something with equity, so later on, we are able to pick some names for those who have uh, passed the exams, I believe, and then see what we can do with that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Miriam from Les Girls, okay. Nanyuki. My question is, you have said that you are all young. Do you consider the old? Yes. Are you old? You're so young. Girl, you know what? When you look at TV, you will find that we have old actors who have to play grandfathers and great-grandfathers and mothers and fathers and children. Acting is a reflection of life. That's what television is. And so we do take all ages. We do, even in our workplace, we do. But you will find that 
I mean, this, I'm just, you know, they just happen to be young and hip and I happen to also look cool hanging out with them. But yeah, we do employ, we are not uh, ageist, I think that's the word. No, we employ everybody who's qualified. Hi. Hi. Uh, Hi. I'm Emilia from Mary Hill Girls. Mine is not a question, but a request. I would like you to be my mentor. Thank Aww. you. Okay, well, I'll take your number and we will have a conversation and we'll talk. Thank you so much. Wow. Hi. Good morning. Thank Good morning. Oh, wow. Up here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hi. Hi. I'm Samuel, and my question is what impact do the shows you develop have to the community, or what is your main? interest in developing them? The impact that uh, our shows have, that the company and the shows uh, in, in general is, is quite expansive. Number one, if we look at the company, Spielworks Media employs very, very many people, um, directly and, 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 and certainly indirectly. Of course, we have the actors, the crew members. So we, we provide employment for about 160 people. And hopefully, in a few years, we'll have thousands of people working for us. But what's interesting is you find that in a department like wardrobe, we have to buy clothes, we have to make clothes, so we create employment for spillover industries as well. So we believe that's a kind of impact we're having in, in our society in, in Kenya. In addition, I think for us at Spielworks, we are making creativity a financially viable option. You can now say, I am an actor, you can say, I am a director, I am making X amount of money, and, and, and we are playing our part in, in, building, in building our economy. That's, that's, that's something that we're doing. But in regards to our shows, one of the things that, uh, that I know for sure is that television, film, the web, the mobile platform, that is such a strong forum. And so for us, what we put on TV, we are very conscious about it. So we talk about different issues that affect our society, and thus we are able to educate people, whether it's about gender, violence, whether it's about education, whether it's about agriculture, it's about politics. We use it as a forum to be able to communicate with the society. So I believe that we are having a pretty positive impact on society. Hi. Morning. Up here. I'm just on the left of the cameraman. Down here. All right. OK. Um. My name is uh, Musabdi from Siolo Boys High School. So my question is, as a private sector of film, what are your stance and uh, magnitude on status of, of improving the film status and quality of it, and also its popularity as considered to other films in like countries like Nigeria, regardless and considerable that our actors, they are very optimistic people. And then my second question is, you see, as long as we are enhancing the production of films, in Kenyan industry. You need to look the behavior of the youth which the Kenyans are behaving in. The production of pornography videos, people accessing it through YouTube or any other social media, but as a private sector, what are you trying to do or enhance in order to fight against or mocking this harmful society or harmful problem which is affecting youth? And then my third question is, uh, is there any benevolent activities or uh, activities that you are doing in those countries, especially Kenya, in improving the status of films in youth in the schools? Because they have the, most of the youth, these producers we are seeing, they have started nurturing their dreams while they are, uh, while they are in the schools. Consider that this, film of, uh, this industry of film is very expensive in terms of producing and accessing it to other national TV shows. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry, I'm writing. You had three questions. So I'm going to try and answer all of them. The first one is you were asking about improving the, the industry, the television industry in Kenya, because and I don't know where you went, but you know, I, I will assume you can hear me. Now, here's the thing that I always say. I say that the biggest film industries in the world are Hollywood in the USA, Bollywood in India, and Nollywood in Nigeria. You're very right. Nollywood employs one million people. 
That's a kind of impact that Nollywood has. So we as Kenyans, we have been challenged to also produce as aggressively and even produce better in terms of quality of content, in terms of the stories we are telling, in terms of how we are filming them. So what we can do is we can learn. We can learn and see what they're doing and work on doing it better. That is the only way we can create employment. And that is what a company like Spillworks Media is doing. We learn from the South Africans, from the Americans, from the Indians, from the Nigerians to see how they're doing. A clever person learns from their mistakes. A wise person learns from other people's mistakes. We would like to be wise about how we do business. So it is a work in progress. We are a very young industry. Hollywood, Bollywood, they're, I think, over 100 years old. We are still in our infancy. But I believe that we are set to take off. The government is playing a very important role with the new legislation of 40% of the shows on TV have got to be local content, and it's going to increase to 60. This means more productions have got to be made, meaning more jobs have got to be created. So the private sector has got to work with the government. What I can do is create more opportunities for actors, for writers, for directors, by ensuring that we are constantly creating new shows and new opportunities. The second one you spoke about is you said that there's a lot of, I believe, pornography on, on, on YouTube and then DVDs are being sold and things like that. Now I think that comes down to the youth, to you young people. What is your value system? Is that what you want to watch? Is it helping you in any way? You see, people have got freedom of choice, but also of expression so I cannot stop them the government however has got to be able to stop them there are some countries where that's not allowed for us at Spielworks that is not an area that we play in we are not interested in it it does not it does not agree with our principles and our values and so we don't even play in that space what we do is we focus on how we can be able to build our community in a positive way what can we do for students? Because that's where talent is harnessed. I believe someone asked that question before. We are very excited because this is the first time that we've ever spoken to a big forum and to just super smart people like you. You're just your scholars and we've been told all these great things about you. And we are going to work with equity and we are going to look for ways in which creativity can be brought to the schools and we can show you how you can in fact be a director. And I, I can tell you that I pay my directors more than doctors make here in Kenya, or engineers, or architects. Yes, it is a financially viable option. Okay? All right. Hi. 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 Um, I'm asking. Um, yes? I'm Sami Kamau. Okay. I'm asking. Um, on how we can merge acrobats, dance, music, art, and drama together with the community needs so that you can help expose Africa because this is the only thing that is going to help Africa like corruption, hunger, famine, and those things like cultural conflicts so that you can help and add this pro the problems that Africa is having. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, I throw the question back at you. All right. Yeah. Do you have any ideas how all these sectors can work together? Yes. Um, like, like, for example, because instead of creating only like soap operas, we can be having something that combines all those six aspects and then will help change Africa. I think I'll see you personally. Yes, that's what I was going to say. What 
I know for a fact is I don't have answers to everything. And so I always look to my team and to folks like you to share with us ideas on how we can do things better. And this sounds like a very good thing. And the thing is that, yes, we must use creativity. I think Africans, we are inherently creative people. I was told you were up here last night dancing or something like that. I don't know. I'm not too sure. But, but we are creative people. And yes, we can use our creative expression to build a better continent, a better community. And so if you have ways and ideas on how we can do that, I would love to hear them. Okay, okay? I'll see you after the presentation. Absolutely. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Hi. I'm patients from Nyaburo Girls. And I think it was not easy leaving your first job or going against what your parents wanted you to do. Now, how did you manage it? Thank you. H how did I manage to go against my parents? So, how did you manage going against what your parents wished you to do? You know what, guys? Our parents love us so much. And one thing I realized is that they wanted me to go to law school, to do communication, because they wanted what was best for me. But if I was honest, as a person, I knew what was best for me. It took a while for me to have that conviction and to really stand firm and to say this is what I want to do. My mother, when I told her I have decided to pursue television, she was not very happy. But you know what she asked me? She said to me, show me your plan. What's the plan? And so then I had to write down my plan and say this is how I want to achieve what it is that I want. And when she read it and she was convinced, she said, okay. And sometimes our parents have to let us make our choices. And I'm pretty convincing, so I convinced them. But at the same time, I had to work hard to make it happen because that is what I wanted. Hi. Hi. Um, as a company, how, how do you help illustrate people who are well talented and have passion on film production, um, acting, and poets? Say that again, my dear. As a company, how do you help illustrate people who are well talented and have passion on production, like films and poets? What we do is we have opportunities, we create opportunities. So in all our shows, you can be a writer, you can be an editor, you can be an actor. So we open up our productions for auditions. We, sorry, we have writers sending in their work. And now, hopefully a poet like you, I'm assuming you're a poet, you'll be able to send and share some work. For us at Spielvox Media, our doors are always open. You can get in touch with us via email and share with us some of your work, ideas for TV shows, or even other creative things, and we'll be able to, to work together. I, I, I have um, some questions here. Um, someone wants to know some of the things that I do. So we, we have several shows. So my shows have been on all networks, on NTV, on on KTN, on um, Africa Magic Entertainment, Africa Magic Swahili. So we have shows like Lies at Bind, Block D, Higher Learning, Saints. Those are some of the dramas and soapies that we produce. Someone was asking that. Next year, I believe we will produce, we'll be producing our first feature length movie. OK. Hi. Hi. Um, as a company, how do you get out of your way to look for new talent, for example, people who can't get access to, to like the Kenya National or uh, the or to theaters for auditions. Um, do you attend drama festivals to look for new talent? Thank you. Thank you very much. We have some people who go around and they attend drama festivals and they share with us the talent where, I mean the talent they have seen. I remember, do you people remember, uh, what's his name, Otonglo, I believe? Exactly. Do you know that Otonglo was on my show? He was very good. He was excellent at the festivals. And so we saw him and we put him on TV. So there are opportunities. We spot talent in different places. Sometimes at the Kenya National Theater, we just recently had a competition online where we asked people to tell us if they wanted to be a talk show host and they tell us why and they tape themselves on their mobile phone and they send the video to us. And we got so many videos and we chose our winner. 
So we are trying to get out of our way to go out there and find new talent and we'll be attending more drama and music festivals to come and spot some of you. Thank you. Hello. I am Lucy from Kirubia Girls and my question is, during auditions, do you consider people, maybe a talent that is, I have a talent, yes, but I'm not good in pronunciation, articulation and stuff like that. Thank you. Yes, we consider. We, you know we are Kenyans, eh? We speak the way we speak, we are who we are. Our TV shows are supposed to reflect who we are. So no, I don't expect anyone to speak like an American. And they've never been to the airport. In fact, I have a problem with that. What I like is I like people to be themselves. When you're authentic and you're genuine, that's when you get the work. So we don't, we don't discriminate against accent or if you have short hair versus long hair. No. Anybody's welcome to audition. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm Christine from Mara Branch, and I'd like to ask you, let's say you have, how can you advise those people who have talents, but in their schools, there's, there's, no, there's nothing, they participate in nothing. It's only studies, and that's all. Some of you go to schools where you only study? Well, which are those schools? I need to come and see the principals. I do. I'm serious. I, I just need a few of those names. You know, for me, I, 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 I was in a school where drama was encouraged. I, I cannot tell you I have a solution because I never actually thought that there are some schools that didn't have drama or music. But now that you've brought it to my attention, I think I'm going to look into it and find out which of those schools are so that I can visit the principal and tell them that drama and music and television is an option. Hello. Oh my God, uh, Sylvia, Pangani girls, uh, oh, you don't have drama club or go to music festivals? Oh my word, at least I have one name, so you'll be seeing me at Pangani girls, that's for sure, understand. I think sometimes folks think that the arts, that it's not a viable option, but for us our mission is to make it a viable option. That's, that's what we want. This is, this is Joshua from Nakuru. My question is quite simple. We are in a digital era these days. And now I was asking, how do vernacular TV shows embrace our digitality as a nation? Thank you. I didn't hear your question. Say it again. How does vernacular TV shows mm -hmm. embrace our digitality as a nation Consider that we are in a digital era? Thank you. Thank you. That's a very smart question. We are in a digital era. We are indeed in a digital era. And there's room for content everywhere. And not everybody speaks English. Not everybody speaks Swahili. Not everybody understands it. And so there is room for television shows. In fact, what you will find is that more and more television stations with a digital migration for television you will find that many TV stations are coming up that are vernacular. So there is a space for them. There is a place for them. Just the way we have vernacular radio stations, similarly, we have television stations that are coming up. And so there is space. That is my answer. How does it embrace? It is there. There is space for it to play and there is room for it um, in the digital space. So okay. Good morning. Good morning. So my name is Ian yes. from Karatina Branch. Mm -hmm. And uh, my question is, so I am a member of uh, an upcoming comedy group among the scholars called Karanyuki Comedy. Okay. So what are some of the things you would advise us to do so that we can grow healthy and become successful? Number one, you must continue studying very hard in school. You must. You must. Because we are going to be doing some stuff with you guys. And we'll put you on TV if you have a successful comedy group. I would love to have you on TV. But I'm going to have to see those report cards too. I'm going to be told how you're doing. So number one is to work very hard. Number two is to keep on doing what you're doing. Number three, be original. Don't be copycats. Let me tell you, that is a successful way to do things. Always be original. If someone is, you know, how many people do accents? 
that uh, the former prime minister, yeah, very many people can do that. But what can you do differently? You will find that successful comedians are those who are original, okay? So that is something I'm going to encourage you and your group to do, to always strive to be original, all right? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question here. Um, someone said, what made you move from Canada to Kenya? And how do you consider careers abroad and those in Kenya in terms of finance capacity? What made me move from Canada to Kenya? I came to work. I came to start my company here. My entire family, my mom, my dad, my brothers and my sister, all my nephews, they all live in Canada. I'm the only one who lives here. But I moved here because I saw opportunities. And how do I consider careers abroad and those in Kenya in terms of finance capacity? Let me tell you something. And most of you will go to America, you will go to Canada, you will go to the UK, you will go to Uganda. <laughs> you will have to work extremely hard. Let me tell you that. As a foreigner in a country, you're going to work double hard. So it's not easy street when you go to America. And you guys will go to Harvard and you go to Yale, you go to Oxford, Cambridge, Leeds. And you will meet just as smart kids, if not smarter. So you're going to work extremely hard. And when you work hard, and when you do extremely well, people will fall over themselves to give you work. Never settle for mediocrity. Work hard and shine. Then you will get a good job. You will be so good that they will come and look for you. It is not easy living abroad. It is actually quite difficult. And then you have to study on top of that and, and excel. Just always know what took you there, work very hard, be excellent at what you do, and I tell you, sure as the sky is above, they will come and they will find you. And then you'll have a great job and make a lot of money. And then you'll come back home, and then we will build Kenya. All right? Okay. Another question? No? We're good? I have some letters here. Kennedy, Mwindi, and Stephen want to see if they can get a chance of mentorship with me. Thank you, we will keep this. We would love to work with you. We really would. And before, oh, Maxi from Gatanga Girls, this is a very good question. Before Nigeria developed in movies, the president said that no movies should be brought into the country. Do you think it can work for Kenya? Now, well, that's an idea. Well, I think Mary, I think I will share this with the president and we can see if that can happen. The, the problem is this, why it's very, very difficult is that in the digital age, you know, that would mean blocking the internet. So we cannot block movies from coming here. You cannot stop competition. What you must always do is look at competition and work to be better than competition. Okay? Any questions? Sorry, his microphone is on. Is not on. Good here. morning, good morning, scholars. My, my name is Norman Kiambu High School. Will you please explain for me why, why when let's say in America we have Hollywood, everywhere the where the movie is is produced, it's called Hollywood. Hood. Can you please explain for me what Hollywood is? Maybe you go for Kenya. You, you get an it is added hood hood. Would you please explain for me? Oh, like uh, where the word wood came from? Is that, is that your question? Uh, all right. So I believe it. There's, there's uh, California, Los Angeles, Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, Hollywood is in Los Angeles, and so it's it's a place. It's a place. It's called Hollywood, and so then it became very popular, and so the Indians then adopted 
and they call theirs Bollywood. Nigerians call it Nollywood. And I think in Kenya we call it Riverwood because of River Road. Okay? So there's really no science, there's no, no explanation, but, but Hollywood is a place. All right? Okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I'm Isaac from uh, Kiagudo Boys, okay. Limuru Branch. My question is, uh, in consideration and uh, my understanding, you are targeting the whole world, you not Africa alone. And uh, I believe now as we move to the digital era, uh, most of us are having now the DSTV, the GoTV, the Smart TV and the rest. And we have thousands and thousands of channels. Now how are you able to target your audience? Because maybe in other people, other programs, they'll uh, target their audience through the internet or through the search services, through the billboards and the rest. Now how you, are you able to make sure that we keep watching you and uh, many people keep track on you? Thank you so much. That's a very solid question. What's your name? Yeah, I'm Isaac. Kimani. Isaac, thank you very much. I had to ask your name because I, I certainly want to remember you. Isaac, that's a very good question. And do you know what's happening? We are moving from television analog to digital. And so it's getting crazy. It's getting very competitive. And everybody's saying, how do we get our shows watched? So we have to be creative. For us, we look for new ways to reach people. We are finding that social media, Twitter and Facebook and YouTube, the entire internet, is a new marketing tool that is allowing us to reach people in, a certain, in, in places that would ordinarily never be able to meet or reach for that matter. Now, for us, when, you, when we put our shows on DSTV or KTN, it primarily is their job to promote these shows. But we cannot leave it to them only. We then take to the mobile channels, we take it to the web channels, and we get new partnerships. We have now partnered with the, uh, a radio station that's got a big web presence. We're going to partner with a telecom company so we can put our work on the mobile platform and on the, on the web platform as well. So we also have to move where everybody is moving. And we have to be very specific. If we are doing a show to target young people, that's what we must do. We cannot just shoot in the dark. We also have to find out what people want to watch, then we create those shows. Before we used to just create and hope that they'll watch, but now we find out what people want to watch, and then we give them that. But we do have to move with the digital. The digital move is sweeping all of us, and so we have to move along with it. Hi. Hi. Um, Samuel from Muhuri Mushiri. So then, I feel so happy, uh, so moved when I see Nigerians try to express their self, like where they come from, like their traditions. And we feel so good when we see their princess, they call their self, uh, some funny names like Okechuku, such names. But in Kenya, we find that we are here struggling with things like showing love movies, something like comedy, but you are not, you have not uh, tell the world that this is our history, this is where we come from. We want to see where we come from. Can you please just work on that so that you know? Absolutely. History? Absolutely, and we agree with you. You know the Nigerians have really been successful because they tell their stories. You're so right in that. And that is a lesson that we have to learn. Because you see, when you're in history class, all that history, None of it has been documented. We don't tell people about our freedom fighters. We don't tell people about Koitalel, about Lenana. We don't tell them about Sakawa the prophet. We don't tell people about Luanda Magere. We don't tell the world these stories. And that is something we have to learn from the Nigerians. They tell their stories very well. Personally, for us as a company, that is something that we want to do. We want to be able to tell the Kenyan stories, and not only in the modern times, but also to go back and to bring the stories forward and teach people what used to happen, what happened when they were building the railways. Because if we don't tell those stories, people are going to come from Hollywood, as we have seen they have done, and they will tell those stories for us. Hello. Yes. I am Guyo Ali, Lenana School. Okay. My question is, how can a TV show benefit a disabled person who is both deaf and dumb? Thank you. 
If they want to be an actor, if they want to be a writer, if they want to be a producer, well, they can come and they can join Spielworks Media. We don't discriminate. We don't. We have opportunities for everybody. And if you know anybody who's looking for work, we would like to know who they are. I have a question here. I like drama very much, but when I was joining Form 1, I was told that music, drama, wastes people's time by my parents. And my friends advised me on how to nurture and emerge a successful actor in spite of negative influence. Guys, listen. You live your life. You respect your parents, you honor them, but at the end of the day, this is your life. Okay? You follow your passion. You nurture your talent. The thing is, if you let someone kill that, that dream in you, it will bother you for the rest of your life. So if this is something that you want to pursue, then you must work towards it. But school can never suffer. Like I said last week, you're first scholars. So, if you're going to be a drama practice for an hour, you will read an extra hour over the weekend. It is to balance both, so none of them can lose out. Okay? Okay. Another question? Hi. I'm Jacinta from My Girls, and uh, I'm asking, what do you do to expose your, your actors and actresses to inter international words, like someone like Oliver Lichondo? And then, what are you doing on the fact that most actors are chosen from the celebrities we have in our country? You'll find people like Avril uh, has joined uh, acting, someone like DNG. What are you doing so that you may get new people and not only influence on only the celebrities? Thank you very much. Avril and DNG are actually on my shows. That's a very, very solid question. They're actually on our shows. Let me tell you something. DNG and Avril have worked very, very hard to become famous, to become popular. I personally work with those two young people and they are very hard working. They have a very good work ethic. And guess what? When I have them on my shows, people watch the shows because they want to watch them. They want to watch them. So I, that is the one thing. Stars and celebrities are always put in shows because they're able to sh push the show forward. It's interesting that you've actually remembered of Real and DNG. So they're there in shows to push the shows, but they're, they're not there just because they're celebrities and they're beautiful people to look at. These guys actually work very, very hard. When you look at them when they're 26, 27, and they have come so far, it means they work very, very hard. But what's also interesting is that we have a character called Joyce Minor. She's never been on TV before, but she will be on TV this time. And hopefully she too can work hard and she can become a celebrity. When they become celebrities, they're very expensive to pay. But they work very hard to build that name. So for us at Spielworks Media, we try to balance it. We have new faces and we also have famous faces. Because when you put them together, then you have a winning formula. You're able to introduce some people and you're able to have other people introduce your shows to the world. So we do both. We give opportunities to new people and to also people who have worked hard. Because why shouldn't Avril get a job, yet she works very, very hard and she's very good at what she does. She deserves a fair chance as well. And she does have the benefit of being famous. But like I said, we also have Joyce Minor, who nobody knows, yet she is going to be super, super popular and famous. And what do we do to expose them to international awards and things like that or the international market? What I always tell my actors is you must always bring your A game when you're on screen because you never know who's watching. For instance, some of our shows now play on the flight on the aeroplane in Kenya Airways. You never know who's sitting there watching. It could be a Hollywood director. If they're watching it and you are acting very well, who knows? Maybe they might find you. And that's what we must always do. We must always bring our A game all the time. Okay? Okay. Are we good? Any other questions? Are we done? Okay, I need a question for Michelle. <laughs> 
We'll have Michelle say something because she hasn't said something. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, okay, so I'll, I'll be quick because I think a lot of your questions have more or less covered everything. Um, but I think maybe the most important thing maybe to talk about is, um, as Dorothy had mentioned earlier, um, I am pretty young. I'm, I'm 25, and I am, I've been given such a fantastic opportunity um, by Dorothy to take up marketing for her company. Um, and I believe that it's because of as she was saying, believing in yourself. You know, I think a couple of years ago, if you had told me that at 25 I'd be heading up a marketing department, I would have said that you were crazy. Um, but it was because that up here I decided that I wanted to do it. Um, and I did a lot of things before I got there. I was an actress before. Um, I went to school. I went to university, and I went and studied production. I then went and studied advertising. And I was in Cape Town. I was abroad. and you know, like the, there was a question where someone asked about living abroad and is it wonderful and why would you even come back? And as much as I had a job and I was in what was deemed to be a fantastic company, um, a fantastic country, sorry, and is, at the end of the day, I was Kenyan. And there's something about working in your own home that makes all the difference. So I, like Dorothy, left my job in Cape Town. I came back to Kenya and I have not been happier than I am right now. And what I would like to say to you is that continue studying what you're studying. You'd be surprised at how sometimes the most unrelated thing can end up helping you in your career further on. I mean, I studied social work at one point, and now I've found that when it comes to dealing with people in my company, um, it's, it's much easier. So study what you're doing. You know, if you're doing physics, do physics. If you're doing chemistry, do chemistry. But there are always avenues where you can continue to do what you're passionate about as well. So don't limit yourself. I think that's my main point, is never, ever limit yourself, because you may surprise yourself. Um, and thank you very much for having us here today. It's been fantastic, and it's very, very exciting to see how many of you actually want to go into the arts. We've got all your notes over here. Um, so we will take note of those people that have said they want to you know, follow up and maybe send us scripts or maybe want to audition for us. Um, but we'll also be sure to leave our contacts. So for those of you that haven't written a note, um, you'll be able to find out what our contacts are and hopefully come and work with us um, later on in the future. So all the best and well done. You guys inspire us. So we're grateful. Guys, thank you so much. We, we have to wrap it up. And I just want to take this opportunity to, to say that we are truly honored and, and amazed that we are here. We have been told you are the brightest of the bright of the bright stars. And so this is an absolute honor for us. I don't think I have ever been in a room collectively with so many smart people. So I'm, I'm leaving feeling very smart. I'm just going to take your energy with me and and just say that I'm also very smart like the scholars. In fact, I'm going to call myself a, a scholar by default. But thank you very much for having us today. I hope that you continue working hard. I, can, I hope that you continue shining, keep on working hard in school. Remember, dream, decide, and do. Have a wonderful day, and all the best when you go back to school next week or the week after. Thank you.